Did you know with just a few button clicks inside of Visual Studio Code, you can easily orchestrate .NET applications with .NET Aspire? That's right. With the C Sharp Dev Kit, it's just a few clicks away. So let's check it out. Here I am inside of Visual Studio Code. I've installed .NET 9 and I've added the C Sharp Dev Kit extension. Now with that, I can come up to the command palette, type in .NET, and I'm gonna see new project. When I tap on that, it's gonna show me all of the project templates installed automatically with the .NET SDK. Now by default, the .NET Aspire templates aren't there, so we're gonna to need to install them. So I'm gonna head over to NuGet and we can see that the Aspire project templates NuGet package can easily be installed. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm just gonna type in command. You can open up your terminal or command prompt and I'm just gonna paste that in. Now, when I do that, we're gonna see that this is going to install the .NET Aspire project templates that will now be available on my machine, including an empty host, app host, service defaults, and the starter projects and all the test projects as well. Okay, let's come back over to VS Code and let's see if they're there. I'm gonna do .NET, new project, and I'm gonna to need to refresh VS Code. So let's shut it down and open up a new instance. And that's gonna refresh all my templates inside of VS Code. All right, here we go. And now when I come in, I'm gonna do .NET new project. This is gonna take a look at all of the project templates that are now installed on my machine. And here we go, .NET Aspire app host, empty app, service defaults, starter projects, and so much more. So now if you're just getting started, you can say .NET Aspire starter app. You can give it a location. So let me put it in the code folder here. I'm gonna say Aspire app one, create the new project. I can also say show all app templates here, and I can see if I want HTTPS, if I want Redis caching, and a lot more. So I'm just gonna say create project. And this now is gonna come in and it's going to create my entire .NET Aspire project, which includes a web API backend, a .NET Aspire app host and service defaults, and a Blazor front end as well. So now I have all this available and we can see that it's configured the .NET Aspire app host to have the API service and the front end as well. So this is really nifty if you're just looking to get started with .NET Aspire inside of Visual Studio Code. And here we can see the Solution Explorer has opened up. Now, if I wanna run this, all I need to do is click on this Run button here on the app host. This is gonna compile the entire project up, restore all the NuGet packages on the machine, and then launch the .NET Aspire dashboard, running both the back end and the front end. So let's give it a second here to check it out. All right, my dashboard is launched and I'm logged in here. So we can see that I have both the projects running, my backend and my front end. I can see all my ports and all I can do now is just simply click. I get counter of my entire application working, including the weather front end here calling into my backend. So now I can go into my traces and I can see everything happening from start to finish calling that service. All right, cool. But let's say you want to go ahead and add .NET Aspire orchestration support to an existing project. So over here, I have my tiny shop application. This application here has a backend and a front end like we just saw with Blazor and an ASP.NET Core web API. It also has some shared code as well. So again, I've installed the C-Sharp Dev Kit extension. And here we can see that I'm using some simple endpoints and configurations inside of here. And I have my front end and then in my back end for products, it's serving up an in-memory database and configuring some static files and some middleware here too. So I could go ahead and configure inside of VS Code to start up both of these, but let's add .NET Aspire orchestrator support. Inside the Solution Explorer, on the solution level, right-click on your solution and say add .NET Aspire orchestration. Here, it's gonna ask us what projects we wanna be orchestrated by .NET Aspire. So I'm gonna say products and store. I could add one, and I could also come back later and add another one later on, but we know we wanna orchestrate our products and our store. So I'm gonna hit OK. Here, let's just call it the app host and I'm going to call it the service defaults. So I get to name those projects that will be added into my solution. All right, now from here, we can see that the projects are now being added. Here's my app host, and here are my service defaults that are being added in. If I go into my products, for example, we can see that under dependencies and projects, the service defaults have been added. If I go into the app host, we can also see that the projects have been added for products and store. If I go into that program CS, 
we can now see that our project has been added here. Now, there are a few things that I need to do. I still need to add in each of those projects. So I'm going to say var. And the first thing I'm going to do is say products. I'm going to say builder.project, add project. And I can say projects dot. And automatically, we'll have our products created here. I'm going to give it a key of products. Perfect. Now I'm going to do the same. I'm going to say builder dot add project. And I'll say projects dot and I'll add the store. Perfect. Here I'm going to say store. Now what I can also do on top of here is say dot with reference and reference the products. And I'll say with external HTTP endpoints and I'll do dot wait for and I'm going to wait for the products to start up before I start the store. Now there are a few other things that I'm going to need to do. Remember that the service defaults are here, enabling open telemetry, health checks, and service discovery. And additionally, it also enables us to add our health check endpoints here as well. So here, even though we've configured our dependencies to reference the service defaults, we're still going to need to enable that in both of our pre-program.cs files. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to say builder dot add service defaults. And then down here, I can say app dot map default endpoints, just like that. Now I'm also going to go into my store front end and I'm going to do the same exact thing. Builder dot add service defaults. And then down here, I'll say app dot map my default endpoints. Perfect. Now, because my app host project is enabling me to use service discovery here with the products, I can now go in to my front end project of the store and update the app settings.json. Here I have two different endpoints for HTTP and HTTPS, but we can get rid of that. And now I can say HTTP plus HTTPS, and I can just say products. Perfect. Now, inside my program CS, we can see that that actual configuration setting will still be used, but it will be opted into service discovery because we've added the service defaults there. Now let's go back up to our app host program and let's go ahead and run it. This is now going to compile up our app host, our products, and our front end project as well, and launch it alongside our .NET Aspire dashboard. So we get our full end to end tracing and telemetry and being able to run both projects from a single click. All right, here's my app host running my two projects inside my .NET Aspire dashboard. Here we can see both of the URLs. I can tap on that API to get back the information of the products. I can also tap on this local host here. I can tap on products. That's going to bring up my page with all of my products that are coming in. Now, if I come back over, we can take a look, of course, at our console logs now. So we get information about our products. We get information about our store front end. And we start to see information such as our poly resiliency that's automatically kicked in and the retry policy that's enabled. I can go into the structured and I can take a look at all the structured logs. I can even go into the trace so I can see exactly what was happening in that entire trace when I was getting the products. And now I can dive in deeper, things that didn't exist, such as metrics, because I've enabled that open telemetry automatically in this project. Not only for HTTP requests, but all sorts of information like process runtime assemblies, GC allocations, and so much more. It's really just that easy to add .NET Aspire orchestrator support to your existing projects. Now from here, we have all of our projects that can now be checked into source code, but I can also come back in and at any time add additional NuGet packages into my dependencies here. So if I click on that app host, we can say add a NuGet pa package and look for Aspire hosting. And that's gonna show me all the hosting packages that are available. Well, there you go. That's just one of many features in the C-Sharp dev kit for .NET Aspire projects, but there are tons of features for C-Sharp applications and projects to check out. I'll leave links below to not only the .NET Aspire documentation, but also C-Sharp dev kit and getting started tutorials as well. If you like this video, give it a like, hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all the videos we put up here on the .NET YouTube. And that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, I'm James. Thanks for watching.